It's another Sunday morning here on TXA 21, and that means it's another edition of Inside the Huddle. We are at the House of Blues here in downtown Dallas. I'm Bill Jones, along with Jay Ratliff, as we move into that great month of December. What a great time of year it is, and we're here each and every week throughout the season. Of course, the Cowboys in first place taking on the New York football giants. But, Jay, let's look back at uh, Thanksgiving Day real quickly. And that was a very special day for the Cowboys, for the team, because you got a victory on Thanksgiving oh, Day. Oh, absolutely. You know, winning makes the turkey taste better. A whole lot better. <laughs> <laughs> and being in first place uh, through the month uh, of November. Even that's better. That's, that's the dressing and everything else. <laughs> Well, we've got a very special edition of Inside the Huddle, and we've got a very strong Cowboy player who's going to be joining us, right? Yes, we're talking about the premier run stopper, Igor Olshansky. Igor Olshansky will join us here Inside the Huddle. And you ready to go Inside the Huddle, Jay? I'm ready to go. All right, let's head downstairs Inside the Huddle here on TXA 21. And we are now inside the huddle in the restaurant area here at the House of Blues in downtown Dallas. A reminder, you can join us each and every Monday night here at the House of Blues for the live taping of the show, which you are now watching here on TXA 21. We're here every Sunday at 1130 in the morning. And uh, Jay, it seems like a long time ago now, but back on Thanksgiving Day, you did have the win over the Raiders. Do you like playing on those Thanksgiving Day games? Yes, I do. I look at it as another buy, especially when you win. You have plenty of time to recoup, uh, get your energy back, take care of the little nicks and bruises, and uh, come back full speed. So right now, I'm definitely ready to go. All right. So, uh, so you, when you go back and look at that Oakland game, which you did, I guess, mm -hmm. when you reported back to work on Monday, you took a little bit of a look at, at mm -hmm. the Oakland game. You know, early on defensively, they were gashing a, a little bit with right. Justin Fargus. I don't know what was said at halftime, but mm -hmm. the run game got totally shut down in the second half. Right, right. Any, anytime someone gashes, uh, I, I, I don't know about other defenses. I know us in particular. It's just a little minor adjustment. Someone's not in that gap. You have to just be more disciplined. It's just that simple. It takes all 11 to do it. If one breaks down, then every, all, everybody else pays for it. So you don't want to be that guy. <laughs> and, uh, and then playing the Giants this week. This is a team that's known to yeah, have a, a heavy ball, run game. Yeah, Pounding the ball, running it down your throat. And they have uh, two great backs. And, you know, we just have to prepare to stop them. Igor Oshansky is our guest tonight. What can you tell us about uh, Igor? And, you know, people talk about him being probably the strongest guy in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Is he the strongest guy you've mm -hmm. seen? He's definitely one of the strongest guys I've seen. <laughs> well, the strongest guy right now, I'd say, is Larry Allen, but Igor is definitely <laughs> But up Larry's there. not playing. So. Yeah, yeah, but he, <laughs> he's definitely up there. Um, I, I didn't see a guy who, who takes more pride in stopping a run than he does. Uh, he has this thing. He says, like, if they do not run the ball to my side. And uh, let me tell you, if, if you're running over there, you better be ready to deal with him. <laughs> All right. Uh, one thing I want to uh, get into with you is I think a lot of people uh, would like to know what – a typical NFL player's schedule is like during the week. Oh, man. All right? So, like, for instance, this past week, mm -hmm. well, you go back through this season, you've had so many victory Mondays that it yes, hasn't yes, been a yes, typical yes, have, yeah. routine week <laughs> because you've had Mondays off yeah. after victories a lot of times. But let's look, look, go back and look at this past week. Okay. And, on, and I'm talking the week leading up to the Giants here. Mm -hmm. you, you go in on Monday. You look at tape. Yeah, you're yeah, off on Tuesday. What's, take us through a typical week. Well, typically um, on Mondays, we, we will like uh, watch film, look at the things we did right, look at the things we did wrong, we'll talk about it a little bit, and then we forget about it. We'll get ready for the next team, and this week we're getting for, ready for the Giants. So uh, we looked at about a half of the Raiders game, and we started getting ready for the Giants, um, looking at things they do. Then we go out and um, practice. Well, today we practice, but typically we just go out and run. And how many days a week do you lift? Whew. For me, I, I do two to three. Uh, you have some guys in there like every day, every single Would day. Would Igor be an everyday guy, you think? Look at him. <laughs> I mean, <yeah. laughs> He's definitely an everyday guy. All right, yeah. we're going to be talking to Igor Olshansky in a moment here on Inside the Huddle. We're just getting started here on TXA 21 at the House of Blues in downtown Dallas. Yeah. 
Closed captioning for Inside the Huddle provided by Hennessy and limousine transportation provided by A Vision Limousine Service. Limousines for all occasions. This segment of Inside the Huddle is brought to you by Home Marketing Services, HMS, helping the homeless one renter at a time, and Toyota of Irving. And we welcome you back to Inside the Huddle here on TXA 21 and from the House of Blues in downtown Dallas. I'm Bill Jones along with Jay Ratliff this week, and we do have a very special guest, Igor Olshansky who was a second round draft pick of the San Diego Chargers back about five years ago in his first year with the Cowboys. Igor, welcome to Inside the Huddle. Thank you guys, thanks for having me. And uh, what, what an interesting story, of course, Igor is. He uh, was born over in the Ukraine, immigrated with his family some 20 years ago at the age of seven. We'll get into all of that, but uh, so far, so good here in Dallas. How have you liked your stay here so far? Can't complain, fans are real nice and uh, it's a great opportunity for me to come in here and uh, be a part of the Dallas Cowboys and uh, win a Super Bowl ring. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Super Bowl. Yeah, you like the sound of that? <laughs> yeah, I like the sound of that. But, I mean, like, I'm still stuck on the whole, you know, one game at a time thing. And I'm pretty sure he's going to do that. Every Sunday he always shows up. You know, I mean, like I said, he really, really takes pride in the run. And that, that was something that we was missing on the defensive line. And, I mean, he brought the attitude and we all just feed off of it. Of course, uh, Igor played with the San Diego Chargers, and you'll be playing against your former teammates next week. You looking forward to that? Yes, obviously we've got to get through uh, and ha handle these kids over here in New York. So uh, <laughs> after we get done with them, we're going we're gonna to go over and, uh, or should I say San Diego's going to come over here. It's going to be a great game. I know a lot of guys over there, very competitive, very tough. It should be a, a fun game to play in. <laughs> you know, uh, comparing defenses and comparing Cowboys Chargers, you know, Cowboys had a decision to make in the 2005 draft, and it didn't concern Jay Ratliff, what I'm getting at here, although he was in the That's 2005 right. draft. But at the top of the draft, it was DeMarcus Ware or Sean Merriman. You've played with Merriman in San Diego. You've played with Ware now here in Dallas. Compare those two. Well, Sean Merriman plays Sam Backer, and D. Ware plays Will Backer. It's two different positions, really. Uh, Sam Backer does a lot more covering the tight end. It does a lot of force in the Will Backer, uh, you know, blitz. Blitz is a lot. A lot of a lot of times you're, uh, well, you are on the open side and things like that. And uh, so it's a little bit of a different position. But uh, they both take pride to play the run. Um, at their best, I think it's very hard to choose. You know, who's better? Uh, D. Ware is amazing at what he does. He's probably one of the best pass rushers, along with Jay Ratcliffe, that I've ever been around with. Uh, is a pure pass rusher, but ball, but they also take pride in the run, which is very hard to find nowadays. A lot of guys either great run stoppers and can't you know can't pass rush or vice versa, things like that. The guys that take pride in doing both is very very hard to find. Uh, right now, Merriman's going through a bridge year because he uh, you know hurt his knee pretty good and had um, played for a year I think on it and then had surgery. So this is a bridge year. You know don't. Don't judge him this year. You know, wait, wait this year, see what he does next year, and then make your opinion. Because you know, it's very hard for him. But both of them are ph phenomenal Hall of Fame players, and they have a lot of you know. It's, it's hard to stop them. At their best, they are very, very, very good. All right, I'm interested in. Well, he's talking about uh, when it comes to stopping the run. I mean, this is the first time I have ever in my whole career been around some guys who was like, hey, I'm stopping the run. They're not running the ball to my side. I mean, usually everyone's talking about, I need sex. <laughs> you know, TFL here and there, yeah, yeah, yeah. But sacks, mm -hmm. calls, fumbles, something like that. Something more glamorous than stopping the run, like the dirty work. Igor, uh, you said right off the top something about a Super Bowl ring. Are you now more convinced than even when you sign with this team that this team has a legitimate shot this year of winning that Super Bowl ring? Well, you know, me coming in training camp on OCS, o OTAs and seeing this team, how, you know, how, how potent, how talented this team is. and. You know, I always knew that, that we have a shot. Um, now we're a little bit closer, and, uh, you know, I think it's good to struggle early in this league and then, you know, as opposed to having an easy ride throughout the season, I think. We, we you know, we, we, we went 14-2 and two in 2000, I think 2006, and uh, we had a first round bye, and then we lost to New England Patriots. Uh, at home in San Diego from you just like cost fumbles here or late penalty there like not really a lot of uh, You know so easy for us the whole season. We never really haven't had a lot of turmoil and things like that So it's good to struggle early Have that taste in our mouth know what it's about and then go out there and go past it learn from it and play at all cylinders when it's time to win 
All right, we've got the football out of the way. We're going to get into the very interesting story of Igor Olshansky with Inside the Huddle continues in a moment here on TXA 21. This segment of Inside the Huddle was brought to you by Carter Eye Center, the official LASIK surgery center of the Dallas Cowboys, and Earth Motor Cars, world-class pre-owned vehicles at down-to-earth prices. This segment of Inside the Huddle is brought to you by Apple Vacations, America's favorite vacation company, and Occidental Hotels and Resorts, raising the bar for all-inclusive vacations. And we're back here on Inside the Huddle at the House of Blues in downtown Dallas. Bill Jones, Jay Ratliff, Igor Olshansky. And when I got here to the House of Blues tonight and I talked to Jay, Jay said, okay, we got to talk to Igor mm -hmm. about his grandfather. What about his grandfather, Jay? Uh, his, his grandfather is, um, oh, man, he's a juggernaut. <laughs> good, good, good parent. I mean, from, from what I hear, uh, you know what? I'm going to let Igor tell you. Tell us about your grandfather. And was it World War II? Yeah, World War yeah, II. Yeah. Well, I've actually have, you know, it's long stories. I'm going to try to cut as short as I can. I have two grandfathers, one from my mother's side named Abraham and uh, one from my uh, father's side named Joseph. And uh, they were very, very, uh, you know, big, strong individuals. There's actually a saying where Joseph would hit you, no hair would ever grow again. And then, uh, <laughs> and then from my mother's side, Abraham, he was, uh, he was like a commander. He was on a cavalry. And he got wounded 11 times in World War II and then uh, came home and married my grandmother and had, uh, and had two kids after World War II. And, uh, you know, just a long story like that. And, uh, and you know, there was in the Soviet Union? In the Soviet Union. There were yeah. stories about him lifting up, actually lifting up his horse, you know, squatting his horse and things like that. He was a real, real, real strong individual. And uh, uh, actually both my, uh, both my grandfathers were real strong. One was a, uh, didn't get wounded because he was a chef for a general. And those, you know, those type of people didn't really go to war because, you know, the generals took pride and obviously they're not going to, you know, you got to eat. You're not going to send your chef to war, you know, the guy, the guy that cooks <laughs> meals for yeah. you. So he's, he, he, he kept them close. It was a blessing. And uh, he used to uh, ride horses, you know, to, uh, it's kind of like a taxi service, you know, from town to town and things like that. And uh, um, he, actually, uh, he actually fell off his horse one time and uh, his horse uh, dragged him all the way back to his village and they were about to bury him because you know he had a head trauma and back then you know the medicine wasn't that sophisticated so they thought they thought that he's dead and um, they were about to bury him and then my 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 gra my great grandmother uh, went to give him a kiss before they buried him and she realized that he was still breathing wow so uh so luckily for that obviously <laughs> you know he um, <laughs> she saved him and you know kind of nursed him back uh, nursed him back to health things like that so. now was that abraham the that was yosef okay and is abraham was he the one that was shot 11 times in the yeah Red Army? he was wounded he was partially paralyzed of his left hand um things like that he was a very prideful man and uh you know, went through a lot, and he would have been named a hero of the Soviet Union, but they don't give that that honor to Jews, so they didn't they didn't give him that honor because it was just more of a political thing. Let's get into this uh, bench press record that you set at the combine, or I guess at your pro day. You, mm -hmm. 225 pounds is what they have to bench as many times as they can at the combine or at their pro days. Mm -hmm. This man over here did it 41 times Crazy. at the combine. <laughs> There was, a, there was another guy who did it, what, 42 times? And so a couple of weeks later, at his pro day at the University of Oregon, Igor was determined to beat that record, and so he just did it 43 times, just for good measure. Yeah, it was, <laughs> I entered the draft in 2004. I was a junior. I had one more year left at the University of Oregon. And, uh, you know, the coach is like, don't leave. You know, we'll get you, you know, we'll pump you up to be Gatorade, you know, uh, to be uh, whatever, you know, All-American, this and that. And I'm like, you know, I'm ready to go. I felt like I'm going to be as good as I'm going to be here. You know, it's time for me to go to, to the National Football League and, you know, and get, and get really, you know, get some money for all the, you know, beatings that I've, that I've been taking in football. So <laughs> take care of my mom and get married and things like that. So uh, they're like, don't do it, don't do it. So I send in the NFL my whatever, you know, I'm, 
I went in the draft. They sent me a letter back saying I'm going to be drafting a fourth round. And I'm like, OK, you, you guys watch when I bench press uh, 225. You know, my goal was 50. You know, I never did it more than, than 45. But I knew I was going to run a 4940. I knew I was going to be able to bench it over 40 times. And I, you know, I knew my film would stand up to being, you know, saying that I'm going to be a physical player. So I went in there at the combine, and Isaac Sapuanga and Junior Sevilla, it's on the team now, and myself were kind of hanging out. Uh, Tank Johnson a little bit too. And we kind of hung out, and you know, it was, and we just, you know, had fun out there, and ben, you know, did a bench press competition. I did it 41, and then my pro day, I did it 43. Uh, I separated my AC joint, actually, my second to last game of my junior season. But it didn't really hold me back or nothing. And then about, <laughs> about two and a half years, three years ago, I did it 45 times. And that was really the last of my heavy lifting days. I just, right now, it's all about maintaining Amen the strength and it. things like that. <laughs> <laughs> he separates his AC joint, second to last game, yeah. what, two, three months before the combine, and yeah. still is able to do it 41 times. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Sounds like I had a good time at the combine. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, we were hanging out and just having a blast. You know, getting drafted you know, and all that. Because I didn't get to go. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's all right. You made up for it. Yes, he did. Yeah. And uh, of course, Igor was a second-round draft pick in '04. We won't bring up what Jay was in '05. All 05. the way at the bottom of the barrel. Got to reach yep. way down there. Yeah, yeah but look there. where you are now. Yes. Yeah, I'm not done yet. Though. I'm still hungry. <laughs> but, yeah. All right. We continue here on Inside the Huddle. More with Igor Oshansky from the House of Blues in a moment. This segment of Inside the Huddle was brought to you by Sports Connection, your number one stop for Dallas Cowboys ticket packages and sports-related travel. And Lux Audio. This segment of Inside the Huddle is brought to you by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. And All Natural Snapple. The best stuff on earth just got better. And we welcome you back here to Inside the Huddle at the House of Blues. A reminder, you can catch us every Sunday morning here on TXA 21. Bill Jones, Jay Ratliff, Igor Oshansky. All right, Jay, you've heard the Igor stories yes. in the locker room ever since he came over from San Diego. Uh, let's hear some of, those, some of those good stories from Igor. What do you think? Oh, right now, I mean, the, at, at first, you know, we was kind of filling each other out. You know what I mean? He... he we're, we're cool now at first. I mean, he look at me, I look back at him. I mean, he didn't really, you know, who he was, you know what I mean? And that's how it just, I mean, know. here's a guy who grows yeah. up in Georgia. Yeah. Small town, relatively small town in Georgia. Small town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here's a guy from the Ukraine. Yeah, the other side of the world. Up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even San Francisco is yeah. the other side yeah. of the world from small town yeah, Georgia, right? Okay. So how did y'all connect once he was um, here? I don't know. But once we talked and we, we sat down, you know, got to know each other. I mean, during training camp what was it was probably like when we got closest. I mean, it was cool after that. I was just like, man, you don't fit right in. I mean, you're just like the rest of us. So, <laughs> like the um, the D line group has always been tight, and um, you know, I mean, he just he just fits right in with us. I mean, we're, we're always joking, we're always laughing at something or someone. I mean, uh, we we do laugh at expense of someone else. I mean, that that happens. But um, he, he fits in. I mean, him and I are similar in a lot of ways. I mean, we, we're kind of both health freaks. Like, he's been on it for a long time, and I'm just now kind of getting that way. I'm realizing the importance of, um, you know, eating healthy and, and how many times you eat all the time. But if you ever seen him eat, I mean, it's, he has like a platter like the size of this table. <laughs> <laughs> and he eats it all, fills it up with ketchup and eats it all. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's crazy. Ketchup is his thing. <laughs> For both of you, what do you think you'll be doing after your NFL careers? What do you want to be doing after your NFL careers? Uh, me, I'm going back to school. I like to do something in the medical field. That's, I feel like that's my calling. I, I love helping people. Um, that's something my auntie, my mother, uncle, you know, everyone in my family has done that. I mean, that's, and that's pretty much, you know, all I know, what I feel really comfortable with. And that's something I want to get into. How about you, Igor? Well, I wouldn't mind uh, running around. I mean, do this little mixed martial arts circuit, maybe about five. That's five what I was wondering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, maybe I don't want to make a career out of it by any means. I just want to make my mark, win a belt, and go home. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully one day we'll see you take on Brock Lesnar. Uh, I, I want to see that one. Yeah, I'll wait to see that one. Obviously, it depends how my body's feeling. I mean, I want to. I want to ride this football train as long as it takes me, and you know, God, you know, God willing, I could do it for another, you know, seven years. Well, the way MMA is taken off, you might make more money doing that than in the yeah. NFL. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it really is blowing up. I'm, I, that's something yeah. I enjoy doing as well. I mean, I, 
I do a little training on the side, especially in the off season. It, it really helps with football. Yeah, I like it. it really, really does help with hand eye coordination and pass rushing and everything. I mean, so it's it's, it's a good thing to do. Yeah. Igor, we appreciate you joining us here on Inside the Huddle. Thank you very much. Thanks Igor for having me. Oshansky, Jay Ratliff, mm -hmm. I'm Bill Jones. Jay, you want to send us out? Oh, no, you got it. You always do okay. so well. Okay, all right, I'll do it. We'll see you again next week here on right, Inside you, you, you the Huddle. <laughs> Sponsors of Inside the Huddle include Home Marketing Services, HMS, helping the homeless one renter at a time, the Carter Eye Center, official LASIK surgery center of the Dallas Cowboys, Earth Motor Cars, world-class pre-owned vehicles at down-to-earth prices, Symantec, confidence in a connected world, Insight, maximizing your business advantage, A-Vision Limousine Service, limousines for all occasions, Occidental Hotels and Resorts, and Apple Vacations, Sports Connection, your number one stop for Dallas Cowboys ticket packages and sports-related travel. Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. All-natural Snapple, the best stuff on earth just got better. Toyota of Irving. And Lux Audio. Inside the Huddle is filmed live on location Monday nights at House of Blues in Victory Park. Log on to InsideTheHuddle.com for filming dates and showtimes. Video production services provided by Gridiron Films. Tune in next week and go Inside the Huddle, a production of Sports Media Incorporated.